Okay, for today's video, I'm going to make the Gotham by Gaslight cowl, which has these detachable goggles. And they just Velcro in the back here. But this is not so much based off of the new animated movie that's coming out, although just getting hyped up for that is what made me want to make this. But on the original comic, which was done by Mike Mignola, and a few things of note, the way he drew it was the ears were more in the center of the cowl, and they had more of a thin, slender shape, and I tried to give them more of a gothic shape and look, and had this stitching along the front here. Now, the goggles, it's been a while since I read the comic. I don't know if they're in there or not, but I thought it would be a cool addition. And unlike the animated film, animated film of course if you've seen any of the trailers they made the eyes square I did not make the eyes square on this one I made them round which is more true to the original comic book artwork so I'm hoping to do a full cosplay of this at some point in the future but this is the first step and this was tedious and frustrating but a lot of fun and this video is very long but there is a lot of different steps involved in making this so it took a little longer than usual so, hopefully this video will inspire you guys and give you some ideas, and let's get into the build. Alright, first step for this is to make my pattern, and my pattern here is made on a mannequin head that I squirted on and rubbed around some of this Elmer's school glue. You can then cover it in a plastic bag or saran wrap or anything you have. Make sure you stick it in there as good as possible and you very carefully lay duct tape over it until you match it to the shape. Any static features like the ears, I just cut out of cardboard and tape to it. That'll end up on the final pattern. And same thing as the nose here. And of course on my first Batman cow video, I didn't make the face. I just inserted a face from a plastic mask. And the reason for this is, is... You can't, at least in my experience, get that kind of detail in foam without a serious amount of work, which we're going to have to do some of that type of work on this. Uh, I feel like with the new animated uh, Gotham by Gaslight that's coming out loses a lot of the stuff that made the original uh, Mike Mignola drawn cowl look cool. So I'm going to put most of those elements in this. And yeah... Once I get back to this actual subject, once I get my duct tape on here, I just draw out my cut lines with a Sharpie, which is where I'm eventually going to cut out these pattern pieces before I draw them onto the foam. Alrighty, so I cut out the pattern pieces from the duct tape, and I cut along this inside line here, and you're going to notice all of these V's and spaces here. They're just lines I had to cut into it in order to get the pattern to lay flat. Okay, and once I draw out the pattern, I will have to eventually glue all of these V's back together here. And the red here is the left side of the pattern that I have already cut out. Next, I'm going to trace it onto this blue foam and cut it out. And I already took a picture of this, so you will have the pattern... Uh, I'll put it up on the Facebook page like I normally do, and you'll notice these arrows here. These are the places where I cut it on a pretty sharp bias inwards, okay? This being the outside of the pattern, and this being the inside of the pattern. You can see the angle that I cut it was pretty sharp, and pretty extreme. You'll need a sharp X-Acto knife to execute those kind of cuts. And once I have my left side pattern here, I just take it, flip it over, I'll trace it out on this blue and cut it out identically to this one, and then I'll have my right, right side pattern. So the very first step, now that I have all four main pieces of the pattern cut out, is to begin to glue them together. And as in so many other videos, I'm going to be using contact cement. And this has a handy applicator brush, and I just take the brush and I brush it in all these V's that have been cut into the pieces on all four pieces. All right, now that the contact cement has sat here for about 15 minutes or so, enough that it's ready to be bonded, 
I'm going to go ahead and start putting all these together. Okay, and you can see that by putting all this back together, it's already starts to get that nice curvature and shape of the original pattern. I'm going to do the same thing with these two as well. Right now that I have all of the corners put in together, I'm going to glue the red and blue center pieces together along this center seam here. Okay, I went ahead and glued the two center pieces together and I put some more contact cement on it next. I'm going to be adding on the two side pieces. Alright, I now have all four sides together and as you can see from this point it's kind of a oblong, knobby, bumpy mess. But all this is going to get smoothed out and that's where the final actual real definition of the cowl is going to come in. and. That's all going to be due to several things. One is a heat gun. You're going to need one of these. The other one is something round. Uh, could use the mannequin head, but it's actually a little smaller than this. Whenever I make my patterns on the mannequin head, I scale them up a little bit because my head is larger than it. This one is actually closer to the size of the top of my head and has a nice firm round surface that I can put any mask on and then I can heat the mask and applying pressure I can even and round out all these bumps. So as you can see on this one spot here, I just heated briefly and applied some pressure to it. It's already quite rounded off in comparison to, say, the back of it, which is still a squared lumpy mass. And I'm going to continue to do that all over the cowl until I get the shape worked in that I want. Alright, so using my heat gun, I've managed to work out most of the bumps, and I've also put some definition in the face here as far as cheekbones and the brow area and pushing the eye holes in pointing out the nose shaping the bottom to actually fit my chin etc etc and i don't film this because this literally takes several hours for me to heat and shape anything that i make and i can't you know this isn't to teach a full art class on proportion and anatomy you're gonna have to figure that out yourselves i'm afraid and heat and shape your projects as you like now certain areas i can give you some quick tips like this here to get the eyebrow i simply heated this on the outside and then also blew some heat from the heat gun on the inside stuck my finger on the outside and pushed against it with my right finger while pushing down around it with my left 
from the inside and out at the same time which pushed out that area that's kind of how I go through and form the cheeks and the area of the nose and everything and I also will go and put this on and check it in a mirror to make sure it actually you know matches up to my features somewhat so I don't look goofy in it. Alright so now that this has had as much definition as I can put it in at this point with the heat gun I took some Gorilla Super Glue and I just ran that all along all these seams on the inside where I already contact cemented that's just to make sure that all these seams stay in place Next, what I'm going to do is some sanding. I have a Dremel here, and all the sharp edges where I glued everything together and all these bumps, I'm going to smooth out with the Dremel. Now you don't have to have a Dremel to sand this. You can always just hand sand it, but and I will hand sand this as well just to help even everything out. But for all these initial bumps and lumps, see so you can see I still got a little bit of a lump there right on that seam I need to work out. I start off by using a Dremel, it saves a lot of time, it's super fast to sand down some of these initial seams. But I'm going to continue this process and sand every single seam and line and crack all over this, and then go back through with some hand sanding. Okay, so now that I have the bulk of all the sanding done here, you can see it is much smoother and much more evened out. I'm going to take the heat gun here again, and I'm going to go over this, but I'm not going to get it as hot. I just want to reseal all these areas where I've sanded before I go on and do any hand sanding. Just like that. It helps to seal up all these rough areas that I've sanded, but it's not going to take any of the shape out of the cowl that I already pushed and pulled into it for the brow area and all that. That's all pretty much going to stay intact. Now I'm going to go on and do some hand sanding. And for the hand sanding portion, I do use a sanding block. And the hand sanding. It's just to help blend in all the work that I did with the Dremel. Just to help smooth out all those areas where I dremeled it up. Alright, so I finished the sanding and final heat gunning. I put a little bit more definition in the brows here. And sunk the eyes in some more. And articulated the nose flattened out and rounded certain sections of the forehead 
and I'm pretty happy with the chin here. I feel like whenever I have the Velcro on, this will close up quite nicely. And I also took, and the final thing I did was heat the ears. And I heated them on the inside to help pull this up away. And you'll see now that there's a space between here and that they have a curve. And that curve is what's keeping them stiff and standing up. And the next piece for this that I'm going to have to build is going to be the outside of the ears. And I'm going to do this by taking some 3 millimeter, uh, three millimeter uh, foam and just trimming it up until I get one side. And I'll make a duplicate of that as the pattern for the second. And I will take photos of it and put it up online, but depending on how you heat and form and shape the foam for your cow, it may or may not work. But I'm going to upload it to the Facebook. Alright, so here is the pattern piece that I came up with. And what I'm going to take a picture of and put up on Facebook. Uh, next, I took the heat gun and put a crease in it. And then I already glued this side on. You can see here I used contact cement on this edge and on the inside of this to attach this here. And then I just pulled it back and put some super glue underneath it and stuck it down firmly in place with the super glue. All right, so now I have both sides glued on and I heat them and shaped them so that they look the same. And I also repeated the process of sanding with the Dremel and then hand sanding to round all these edges off. And next what I'm going to do is cut the line into the, yes, I'm going to cut a line into this after all this stuff. Cut a line into the face where I'm going to put the stitches through. You could, if you wanted to, just make a regular Batman cowl, leave it plain. But since I'm doing the Gotham by Gaslight, uh, Batman cowl. On most of them I've looked at, there is a line through here with a series of stitches that go across. Some are in an X pattern, some are in a straight pattern. I like the straight pattern, so that's ultimately what I'm going to go with. But, yeah, next I need to draw this line on with a pen and then cut it in with an X-Acto knife. Okay, I used a regular old ballpoint pen to draw the line I'm going to cut in here. And I'm going to use an X-Acto knife to actually cut said line in very slowly and very carefully. I want to point out here that I did not cut all the way through the foam. I only cut a millimeter or two into the foam and just basically scored it so that there is a definite line and separation. Now to get this to open up a little bit, I'm going to hit it with the heat gun. Alright, so I used a heat gun to get the line I cut in to separate, so hopefully at the end it'll look like two pieces. However, I screwed the cut up over here, so I literally just cut a piece of the foam out and stuck in another piece. Uh, I mean, I guess if I wanted to act like I, would per I was perfect, I'd just pretend this didn't happen. But part of the reason I'm showing this is to explain to everybody that you can screw something up and then patch it and fix it. And since one of the next things I'm going to do is going to be silicone work, I'm not super worried about the fact that I... That I just piece this together because uh, I'm going to silicone over it anyways along with all these other seams and cracks except of course the one I just cut in and speaking of that next I'm going to poke some holes on either side of this so I can put uh, my stitching through later but I decided to poke the holes now instead of trying to do it after I did the siliconing because that's going right, to make so it what I'm working off. on now you see all this white here is I am sealing up all of the cracks and crevices and such and to do that, I am using this stuff here, DAP Alex Plus All-Purpose Acrylic Latex Caulk Plus Silicone. Uh, and since it's acrylic, it's water-based. So I never leave it in the tube. I put it in my caulking gun, and I just squirt it into a Tupperware and use my finger to apply it. Uh, I, I suggest that you use gloves. I don't, but I'm a weirdo, I guess. And what I basically do with it is I get a little bit on the end of my finger and then on any area where I would like to apply some to fill in a gap or crack or an uneven area any sort of seam or anything like that and I spread it on 
the surface here where I need it. Okay. And then I also have a cup of tap water. This is just an old Tupperware. I'm obviously not going to use this for food again. And what's in here is just some tap water. It's turned white from the siliconing process. And what I do is I dip my index finger in it and get it wet. And I use my wet finger to just smooth out and even out the excess. And I do that to fill in the seams. And the nice thing about this is since something like a cowl, for example, that's flexible. This will help fill in the seams like Bondo, but Bondo is actually quite brittle. And if you would put it on something like this, taking it off and on, it would chip and crack and come out. So that's why I use this stuff. And I'll show you some of the areas I've done. All the seams here, obviously I'm not going to do this artificial seam that I cut into it. Side seams, where the ears attach on the corners, uh, all along the top seams. The back especially needed a lot. And yeah, as far as the nose, I'm not going to cover that seam. And I did cut in a little line here from the bridge of the nose to the corners. I think that kind of gives it a old school nod to Adam West feel. And once I let this dry, I let it dry about six hours, and then I'll come back and I'll sand it. Now, the only real piece of advice I can give for this is I would apply this as thin as possible, and if you need to, just do repeated applications. If you gunk it on too thick, you get kind of a weird lumpy line instead of the actual seam, which I kind of think looks worse. So I try to do it as thin as possible and do some sanding, and if I feel like I need to go back and refill it, I'll go back and do a couple more layers. All right, so I let this sit overnight, and I've been doing some sanding. I don't use a Dremel on this for sure. <laughs> It'll rip the silicone straight off of the foam and destroy your project, so don't use any power tools. Be patient, especially with this phase. Uh, I usually just use a sanding block. I think this one is like 300 grit or 200 grit. I don't know. It's not super rough in any event. And I just go over and hand sand down. Now, it's kind of hard to visually see, whenever you're looking at this, whether or not there's still a lump. So, there's two, two of the easiest ways I've personally found doing these types of projects over and over again is feeling it. If I can feel a dip where the line is, obviously I haven't got it filled all the way. This side feels pretty good. Most of it feels pretty good. What doesn't feel good, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this on camera or not, is this seam right here. Uh, you can kind of see it, but just feeling that, I can feel that there's still a pretty good dip in there. But like I say, it's better to be patient and put on less and do a couple different layers and get a nice smooth end result than just gunking a bunch off, uh, just gunking a bunch onto your project and then trying vainly to sand it down later because you're going to have a hard time if you do that. So be patient, do multiple layers if you need to, and let at least six hours for it to dry and then sand 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 all right so i have finished all of my siliconing work i did put a little more here on the ears and so on and so forth and did fix up some of these other areas and i've already gone through and started to seal this and what i'm using to seal this is mod podge now i don't know if you can see in the light here get this into focus sorry okay so you can kind of see on the nose when the light hits it, there's a vertical texture running up and down it. And that's because I've applied several coats of Mod Podge to this. Probably going to apply another one or two. But this nose area is going to be textured differently than this and the rest of it. And this is just going to be straight brush strokes. However, for the rest of this here, I have other plans. And those other plans include brush once again this is a soft uh, bristled brush and more Mod Podge and if you've seen my Plague Doctor mask video you're already gonna imagine what I'm gonna do I'm gonna blot this with the Mod Podge to give it
that type of a texture. I'm just blotting it on. Pretty thick too. This is going to take a little bit longer to dry. Uh, one initial thin coat of Mod Podge usually takes about, mm, I would say a half hour to an hour at most. I think for this initial thin coat that I put over the whole thing, I think took me about 45 minutes to get totally dry. Okay, you can see rather quickly I've already covered a pretty large surface area here. So it's not going to take too, too long to go through and do all this. I'm going to do several coats like this. Mainly because Mod Podge is acrylic. And as it dries it will shrink. So to get a real nice texture. And a rather... How should I? I'm not sure how to word this. Consistent but random texture. I'm going to do several layers just like this. And give it about one to two hours drying time in between each layer. Alright, so I did all my texturing. I did about four layers here. The first two layers pretty heavy. The next two layers were not so heavy. They were much lighter applications. Uh, the facial area here, I only did two light layers and like I say the actual nose piece I did none. Okay, So that's the texturing done. And you'll notice now I've started to go through and put the stitching in all these holes which is super super tedious. I was going to use leather but I didn't. I know this kind of looks like leather. It's not. It's just EVA foam. I took a scrap piece of the 2mm EVA foam and I heated it really good with the heat gun. It lost about a millimeter. Now I think it's about one millimeter thick but it's super stiff and pretty resilient and I cut that into thin strips and I've been gradually feeding it through all these holes and hopefully there's enough light you can see this. Yeah. So you can see the little ends here are just sticking out. I literally have to go through and contact cement all of these. I tried doing it in one continuous piece, but that just did not work out. So I ended up doing just one little piece at a time. Okay, now that I have all of the stitching in, I am going to go ahead and start doing some airbrushing. If you don't have an airbrush, you can always just spray paint this, or you could also brush paint the whole thing. But... An airbrush is an initial investment, however, I feel that it is well worth it because I buy a $13.99, $13.59 container of paint and I've had this for about 8 months and it's still about half full. Uh, in comparison with most projects like this, I would have gone through at least half a dozen or a dozen or two dozen <laughs> cans of spray paint in the same amount of time working on all these projects and trying to put out at least a video a week. So this does save a lot of money, and I put some black in that I thinned out a little bit, and I go ahead and just do my base coat. Alright, so this looks pretty good after the first coat. In fact, if you look here on the brows, you can barely even see the seams or any of that stuff. I feel like I did a pretty good job of covering all that up. But you can still see the lines that I kind of scraped in for the forehead and the wrinkles on the edge of the eyes and things like that came out really good. And I think the texture looks really good as well. Of course, this is just the first coat. I'm going to do a second coat as well. Okay, so now that I'm pretty much happy with the way this turned out looks, and don't feel like I need to do any more siliconing or repair work to cover seams or do anything like that, I am going to... <laughs> Sorry, got some blue sanded dust on here and thought I was going to have to repaint something. Deep breath, freak out, over. Okay, now I took, and you can see I sanded this down a little bit here. And that's because I'm going to put the sticky side of the Velcro here, and I'm going to put the, the soft side here. That way I can put this cowl on and then attach it under my chin. And once I glue this Velcro on, I'm going to move on to the goggles. 
Okay. Particular type of Velcro I'm using for this is industrial strength Velcro, and it is actually name brand. Uh, I picked this up locally at Just Cause Cosplay Supply. And what I've done here is I have a sheet of 2mm EVA craft foam that I cut to the width of the side of the Velcro that is soft. And I'm going to glue those two together. But I cut this a little bit longer so I can attach it to one side of the cowl. And over here is the hook side. And to glue these on, I'm using, of course, contact cement. And I've already applied it and let it sit for about 20 minutes to both pieces to be adhered. And I'm going to go ahead and press that down into the area that I already sanded down with the Dremel. And for these other two pieces, attach that as flush and even as possible. We have this overlap here. Okay. Now whenever I put the cowl on, I can just velcro it together and it will hold it securely under my chin. That way if I want a little tighter, a little looser, I can do that. Or if I need to adjust it to compensate for a neck piece. But yeah, that pretty much finishes up the cowl phase of this. And like I said, next will be goggles. Right, so. I took a strip of 5mm EVA foam and I put it up to the eye area on the mask and just kind of trimmed it until I got the shape that I needed. Now I did take pictures of this before heating it and curving it, but I don't know how much this is honestly going to help you because part of the reason that the pattern is shaped the way it is is to fit this mask in the way I heated it and formed it. So this may not fit on yours, but I took a picture anyways of the pattern. All right, now I contact some of this together. And I'm going to do the same with the other piece. And I'm going to take a heat gun and round these out a little bit, but just to show you how this fits here. This notch goes in where the brow area is and fits up pretty snug on Batman's head. And next, after I round these, I took a piece of 2mm UVA craft foam. And you can see it's kind of shiny and glossy and a little bit warped. It's because I heated this pretty heavily. Not only did this cause it to get a little thinner, also got a whole lot stiffer. Okay, don't overheat it because you'll catch it on fire <clears throat> or melt it. But if you get it sufficiently hot to give it this nice shine on both sides, it helps make the foam stiffer. And once I get these to the round shape that I want, I'm going to trace out circles on this to act as an outer cover between this and the actual lenses that I'm going to make. All right, so it may seem like I skipped ahead here, but this is all pretty simple and straightforward, what I actually did. I cut out the rings of two millimeter EVA foam, and then I glued them to the blue parts with this piece of plastic sandwiched in between. And where I got this plastic, was from some packaging. I think this one had a Captain Phasma and or maybe a Kylo Ren helmet in it, but I just took a piece of this top corner here and cut out a couple circles and sandwiched it in between my 
uh, two millimeter EVA foam and these blue base. And then I just took two pieces of five millimeter and I cut them to the length that I needed for the proper distance for these to fit correctly and glued that on. This time though, to glue this center part here, I did not use contact cement. I used some Gorilla Super Glue. And then I just kind of cut and sanded in a groove so that it would fit securely on the nose where I need it, but it also will be uh, strong enough on these edge points that it won't hopefully tear apart or anything. So next what I'm going to do is put some straps on the sides. Alright, so the next thing I did was I took some 3mm UVA craft foam and using some contact cement, I trimmed it curved and glued it in to either side. However, these don't go all the way around the cowl, and I did that purposefully because there is going to be a layer of pleather glued over top of this, which I will then attach Velcro to the back of, so this can be secured on the back of your head. Okay, so I took and contact cemented the pleather here over the 2mm EVA foam, and then on the end here I put the Velcro so that you can attach it in the rear, and next... I'm going to take a mixture of Mod Podge and black craft paint and I'm going to hand paint all the blue areas of this. And part of the reason that I use black foam for the ring is because it would be extremely hard to paint this and not get it on the lens. So, yeah. Black foam for that. Rest I'm going to hand paint. Okay, so painted all this black inside and out. And. I used a mixture of Mod Podge and black acrylic craft paint for that. And for this area here, I just dry brushed on some Folk Art Pure Gold metallic craft paint. This stuff I think was, there's not a price tag on it. I think it was only two or three dollars at the craft store. That's something that's pretty accessible and looks a little goofy on the mannequin head since the mannequin head is not the correct size for this. So how about I go try this on. Alright, so you'll notice that I'm wearing a neck piece here. This is actually from a previous video I did uh, for a Batman, a Batman neck piece. I just retextured it and painted it to match the cowl. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way that it turned out. It fits me really good. I'm stoked on the way the sim seams are hidden. I don't know if I'll wear the goggles with it or just the mask in itself, but overall I'm pretty stoked on it. So yeah, I can't wait to get a little bit further along. Into so this yeah, that way. is pretty much it for this video. Uh, I hope this was entertaining and that you got some ideas for your own project at home or if you'd like to follow along and make this one and like I say too if you want to check out some of the neck piece videos there is one for Red Hood and one for Batman if you want to make one of those but as always thanks for watching and if you if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and as always have a great day